ever calls me. Would you talk to me for a minute? The old woman said. This grandmother is actually one among millions of people around the world who are suffering from loneliness. Perhaps you're one of them. You're one of the people who are suffering from loneliness. And if you're lonely, you should not be afraid to admit it. You should not be afraid to say, I am. Loneliness is a fact of life. At one time or another, you will feel lonely. I have felt it for many reasons. I have felt lonely for many reasons. One of the reasons is to be away from the Philippines. To be away from my country. I mean, to be here in Korea means to be away from my family, from my friends, from the Filipino foods, from the Filipino weather, and the traffic in Manila. It means to be away from my church, to be away from, from my work, to be away from almost everything that was familiar. And when I was new in this country seven months ago, it was March of this year. I felt lonely. I missed my family, my friends. In fact, this feeling never totally disappears. Now, feelings of loneliness come especially during times of difficulties and problems. And it is during this time that I would especially miss my friends, my close friends, my family. But by the help of our God, I have always won over loneliness. Amen? Amen? I have always won over loneliness. The title of today's sermon is Overcoming Loneliness. It's actually part of a series if you have the program. It's, part, it's there in the announcement. This month of uh, November we are doing a series on overcoming life's difficulties. November 1st, the topic was overcoming fear. November, the second week, there was November 8th, the topic was overcoming anxiety, overcoming anxiety, and the, uh, today, November 15th, we're talking about overcoming loneliness, overcoming loneliness. I want to propose to you today that by the grace of our God, we can and we should overcome loneliness. Amen? Amen. Amen. We can. Do you believe that? Yeah. Not only can we, but should we? We can and we should overcome loneliness because God is with us. Amen. Let's go to our text and I'd like us to notice two things here. And the first is this. In our text today, we notice that the Apostle Paul was alone. He was alone when he faced difficulty in the city of Rome. You can see that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, it says, At my first defense, no one came to my support. Defense. This was one of the most difficult moments in the life of Paul. It was the time that he needed the presence of his ministry partners like never before. He had many friends in Rome, I tell you. Paul had many friends in Rome such as Eubacus, Linus, Claudia, and of course the members of the Christian church in Rome. But sad to say, nobody from among his friends showed up when Paul was brought before the court. Paul was virtually, he was literally alone facing the, you know, the Gentile court in Rome. He was alone. Nobody was there to support him. It was unfortunate. Question, why didn't Paul's friends show up? Perhaps they were afraid that they, they might be killed also just like Paul was killed. But nonetheless, it was rather sad and unfortunate that his friends didn't support him in his moments of great need. Unfortunate and sad. You know, it is a matter of fact that this thing, being lonely and being alone, did not happen to Paul only, 
In fact, it happened to many, many other people before Paul. And until now, it's happening to many, many people. I'd like you to consider Job. Job in the Old Testament. Okay. Let's take a look at Job chapter 19, verses 17 to, I mean 13 to 17. You have the text written on the screen, and I want you to join me in reading that. Okay, ready? Go. He has alienated my brothers from me. My acquaintances are completely estranged from me. You have that? Yes. Please read along with me. My kinsmen have gone away. My, my friends, friends have, have forgotten, forgotten me. me. My, my guests and, and maidservants count me a stranger. They, they look upon me as an alien. alien. I summon my servant, but he does not answer. Though I beg him with my own mouth, my breath is offensive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own brothers. Look at the words of Job that even his family, even his wife, rejected him. Job must have felt deeply lonely during this critical time. Consider King David and the Old Testament. He also knew what it meant to be lonely. Let's take a look at Psalm 38, verse 11, okay? Let's read with me, okay? Ready? Begin. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbors stay far away from me. Similarly, still King David said or says in Psalm 41, verse 9, and let's read. Even my close friend whom I trusted, he who shared my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Meaning to say Paul, I mean King David was betrayed by a close friend. And this happened also to King Jesus. You know. And ultimately I want you to consider our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself knew and experienced what it meant to be loved. You know what happened to him? Don't you? He was sold by Judas for how much? 30 pieces of silver. He was sold, sold by Judas. And he was arrested by the soldiers. And when that happened, his disciples were, were gone. They disappeared. They vanished when he was arrested. And he was, you know, he was tried. And ultimately he was brought on top of that tree. And he was crucified there and he died alone. And he agonized. He shouted an agony. He shouted in Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. He says, my God, my God, 